Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Can anyone of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. You see, when we consider the complexity of the universe, we can become overwhelmed. So much is out there and so much is out of our own control and beyond our knowledge and understanding. As a matter of fact, the complexity and mystery of the human body is largely unknown. Even with the advancement of medical science of today's age, in an article written by Timothy Carey, he stated that being a human is all about control. We desire to be in control of our lives. Truth be told, we are not as in control as we think we are. Here's a question posed to Job that's worthy of contemplating. In Job 37 verse 14 states, listen to this Job, stop and consider God's wonders. Do you know how God controls the clouds and makes his lightning flash? When was the last time you contemplated the wonder of God? His power should leave us in awe and guide us to the realization of our finite knowledge and power. It's hard to let go of the desire of control. But there is great peace in doing so. In Matthew 6, Jesus brought his disciples to the same place of contemplation as Job. Let us consider the same as the disciples as we trust that God is in control. Consider the fowls of the air. Let us look at the birds so that we can gain wisdom and apply it to our lives. These are not domesticated birds that Jesus was referring to in this passage. But these are birds that are allowed to roam freely and fly freely in the wild. They do not sow, reap or store in barns, yet they are fed. Psalms 147.9 proclaims, He gives food to the wild animals and feeds the young ravens when they cry. God in his providence does not leave the birds without a meal. Are you not much more valuable than they are? God did not create us a little higher than the birds. The Bible tells us that we are created a little lower than the angels. We are not just marginally different to the beasts, we are significantly different to beasts. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God cares about you. Therefore we can put our trust in Him and know that God is in control. We are created in God's image. So yes, we are more valuable than the birds. Since we are more valuable than the birds, since we are more valuable than the birds and yet God looks after them, we can trust God that he will look after us. We can allow God to take care of us. God's love is expressed in his perfect will towards us. The problem we have is we don't see God as the loving father that he is. I am so thankful for my biological father because through my relationship with the him, through my relationship with my biological father, I have experienced a fraction, such a small view of the love of my heavenly father. I can see the love, I can see the love my biological father has for me in his eyes. I am literally his heartbeat and yet in the Bible his love in comparison to the love of God is described as evil. That's how much God loves you. I don't know what you're going through today. I'm just a man, but I just want you to know you have a God that loves you. And if you believe in him, you are guaranteed a safe landing. God never said the storms won't come. God never said the trials won't come. God never said your faith will not be tested. He never said your faith will not stand trial. But he promised you he will be with you. He knows the weight that you can bear. 
One of my favourite verses is Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you a future and a hope. God has a plan for each and every one of you today. His plan is clear. It's not to harm you but to prosper you. And I want to ask you a question today. What is harming you in your life? What are you allowing to harm you? Is it past failures? Is it regrets? Is it mistakes? Is it guilt from the past? Let go of these things. Let go of your past failures and disappointments. God still has a plan for your life. Romans 8.28 And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God. Regardless of what's going on in your life today or what has happened in the past, God still has a plan for you. Your life is not over. All you need to do is trust him. He is in control. You may have messed up. You may have messed up. And you might say to me today that the situation that you're in right now is entirely your fault. And that might be the truth. You may have made that decision. You did what you shouldn't have done. You were told by everyone else not to do it, yet you still did it. And now you're in the mess that you're in. And people around you are pointing at you saying, I told you so. But I want to tell you today, no matter how much you've messed up, God is in control. You could have messed up plan A so bad. But I want to remind you, God is so powerful. He can make plan B even better than plan A. So I want to encourage you today, everything will work out. Okay, let's look at it from another angle. Let's say you're in a situation today and you've done nothing wrong. It's not a decision that you've made. It's not, it's not a bad move that you've made. You just find yourself in that situation. Because the truth is, sometimes stuff just happens. We all know that life is not fair. And it took me a while to realize this. Life is just not fair sometimes. Some people don't get the same opportunities as others. Some people just don't get any good breaks in life and others do. Life can honestly break your heart and it can be unfair. The truth is God never promised that life would be fair. But what he did say is that he is a God of justice. That means he will make the wrong things right, regardless of what you're going through right now. It may not seem fair, but God will not waste your pain. He will make things right. What you and I both know is that life is full of things that we don't want to happen to us. Disappointments, frustration, betrayals, heartbreak, heartbreak. And the worst thing about heartbreak is that it can stay with you for years. If you break an arm, you can put a cast on it and it will heal in a certain amount of time. If you have a headache, you can take medication and it will soothe that pain. But what can you do with a broken heart? And there are so many children of God that are dealing with broken hearts, living their lives with broken hearts, going to church on Sunday, with a broken heart because of failed relationships failed marriages they've lost loved ones their hopes and dreams have been crushed and they have to live with a broken heart living with the constant pain in their chest crying themselves to sleep crying in your room and having to wipe away tears because you hear someone coming what do you do with a broken heart? There is a man called Jesus who feels your pain and he can heal your broken heart. Psalms 147 verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. In this verse we're reminded that even when we feel alone in our brokenness, we are not alone. Even when we feel alone in our disappointment, we are not alone. Even when we feel alone in our heartbreak, we are not alone. 
God is always with those who are hurting and he sees their broken hearts. Then the verse then goes on to say he bandages their wounds. This is a process of healing. God will heal your pain. If you allow him to, if you trust him. You see, God is not like the devil who tries to force himself into your life. God will only come into your life if you invite him and if you seek him. This is why the Bible says so often, seek the Lord, seek him and you shall find him. If we are to trust him and allow him to take control of our affairs, he will heal our broken hearts. You see, the Father is all powerful. When we feel, when we feel powerless, or when we are powerless, we must look to the omnipotent God. The doxology from Ephesians 3 puts this truth in focus. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and forever. Amen. Psalms 8 verse 3 paints a picture of how God created the world by his finger. It is with the same ease that God can meet your needs. You see, God created the heavens and the earth by just speaking. Everything that you see, look at the sky, the magnitudes of the heavens. So you're telling me the God who created the heavens and the earth cannot meet your need. I don't care how dark, dismal, or how big and scary your problem may be, or what position life has put you in. I want to remind you, God is still in control. I'm sorry, but if you believe in the God of Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Are you telling me that this same God cannot fix your situation? And I don't know what your situation is today. I don't know what it is. But I know the God in whom I am preaching. He is more than able, but we need to trust him. We need to give it over to him. It says in his word, cast your cares. You know, the, the term cast means to throw. We are carrying too much burdens. We are children of an omnipotent God who lacks nothing by the way of ability. When we find ourselves worrying, we must look at God and trust his power. We must look at God and trust his omniscience. God knows and makes known the end from the beginning. That's Isaiah 46 verse 10. The knowledge of God is limitless and perfect. He knows what we need, but he also knows what is best for us. We can trust his will and allow him to take charge of our affairs. But God will not intrude on your problems. God will not force himself in your situations. You need to invite him.